to the Deusto International Talks Global Africa, Africa Series. My name is Eider Inunciaga, and on behalf of Deusto International team, I'm glad to introduce you to today's session, The Future of Hospitality and Tourism in Africa, the Years Ahead. Before we start, we would like to inform you that the talk is being recorded and you will receive the session's video very shortly. Moreover, during the session, please feel free to make any question or comment you may have through our chat. At the end of the talk, the panelists will reply to any question you have posted during the webinar. The African continent's richness and tourism potential differ from one country to another. Differences also reach the level of tourism culture, product development, and untapped resources and heritage. Today's session, the future of hospitality and tourism in Africa, years ahead, aims at highlighting and comparing African countries in terms of ecotourism, wildlife tourism's uniqueness, luxury, high-end hospitality, and other tourism-related products. And now, with no further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our session's panelists. Dr. Walid Shubana, who is the Director of Operations of the International Conference Centers in Algiers. Dr. Shubana is an expert in hospitality and mice management at an international level. And Dr. Sami Hashemli, who is an Associate Professor in Hospitality and Tourism Management within the Tourism Department at University of Deusto to whom I give the floor. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank you everyone for attending today. And Dr. Shemli, yours is the floor. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ader. And thank you, Elite, for accepting our invitation for the first uh, Global Africa, uh, the Houston International Talk Global Africa series. Um, I'm going to introduce what we're going to discuss today before I give the floor to, uh, to, to Elite. For, um, uh, for further discussions. So we are going to talk about tourism in Africa, facts and figures, some facts, important facts about the continent. We will look at the constraints and challenges facing tourism uh, in Africa. And then we are looking at what's next, what is coming in the future uh, and the tourism performance. So Walid, I give you the floor. So oh, hello. First, I would like to welcome everybody who is attending uh, this uh, session. You know, the subject uh, is important and it's big tourism uh, in Africa. You know, the country, uh, the, con the continent is very big and the diversified uh, countries are completely different one from uh, the other. And the future uh, of the tourism is really important because it will help a lot the local communities uh, to develop and uh, find jobs, money, etc. So uh, tourism in, uh, in Africa, uh, is completely different from a country uh, to another. As we said, you know, there, there are countries who have a uh, long experience with the tourism, others who are just discovering tourism, but figures uh, are there. As we can see in this uh, first uh, sheet, uh, Africa, the one is in red, figures are not very high. In 2010, the whole continent uh, welcomed 50 million point four tourism, and there are only 73 uh, in 2019. But this number will continue increasing because most of the African countries are working hard in order to attract the most and uh, also you know, in order to diversify the market and attract new, uh, new clients in their countries. We can see that the biggest share is uh, for Europe, uh, then uh, Asia Pacific. It's those countries have a better knowledge, a better infrastructure uh, in a hotel, uh, so they can uh, attract more and more tourists. Africa is still uh, doing the job from the beginning. So from 50 to 73, the figures were to be uh, over 84 millions for 2020. Unfortunately, with the COVID crisis, uh, we will have to see those figures once again. Yeah, we need uh, probably uh, probably also that we are going to to look at later is um, those numbers they are low for Africa because only few countries are are practicing tourism only few countries are selling this product yeah yes unfortunately there are a lot you know there are 52 African countries in the continent and uh, not all of them are working hard on the tourism 
as I said in the beginning, you know, some of some of the countries have been doing a lot of work on the tourism uh, part since more than 50 or 60 years. A uh, lot are new uh, in this uh, field and more than the half of the countries are still dealing with their own problems. So they are not working hard in uh, in this part. As you can see in this uh, in this table, the total contribution of tra travel and tourism to GDP worldwide from 2016 to 2017 by region. You highlighted the two, uh, you divided Africa into two regions. North Africa uh, is the part where tourism has been uh, there since years and years. So when we say North Africa, it's mainly uh, from the right to the left, Egypt, Let's forget about Libya for the time being. So it's Egypt, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco. And this country, since they got their independence, so meaning in the late 50s, early 60s, they, they, they are doing and implementing a constructive tourism strategy. Uh, the other part of the continent, so the sub-Saharan uh, sub Africa, uh, where most of the country are, so we can we, we can see that not a lot of them are, are doing the tourism, even though so here we have 60 million for only four countries, 60 million, so it's the total contribution. So it's yes. 60, uh, 60 billion, sorry, US dollar for only four countries, and it's 116 for 2017 for more than 45, I would say, uh, countries. So, so yes, the, yes. Excuse me, the numbers here, if uh, if, uh, if we see them, we have 2018 and then all of them from uh, 2020, 2021 and 2022 are just forecasts. Yeah. Yes, these are forecasts. Unfortunately, we won't be having those figures. Uh, no increase. Uh, everybody knows why. So it's the COVID crisis is there and it's still there. So let's forget about completely about 2020. Some hopes are there for 2021, and if the vaccine is there and everything goes fine, so we will have some positive figures for 2022. You know, we uh, we, we had 12% increase, which is really, really important for 2018. It was almost 7% increase for 2019. You know, the end of, of 2019 didn't went well. It's then where people started hearing about the COVID crisis. And then 2020, 21, it's the hard period and all our hopes are, are there for the end of 2021 and for 2022. Yeah. So in terms of tourism arrivals uh, for the selected countries, we can see that the top ones are, 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 as we stated earlier, the North African and South African countries, yeah? Yes. So as we can see, Morocco number one, in 2019 with almost 13 million when we know that france uh, exceeded the 80 million tourists spain is almost there with 78 or 76 I, I can't remember very well so we can see that the number one is still very very far from the number one in the world america is there also on the top three uh, worldwide but as as you said uh, here in, in in africa the the three the three first ones are 9.4, 10.2, 12.9. But from the number four, four, it's only 2 million point two, 1 million point three, and then not even 1 million for, for, for the six and ongoing. So those figures are pretty low, but we can say that uh, there is some, some hopes to see some figures going, uh, going up. Yeah, hopefully, let's say. And in terms of employment, also we can see we can see that here in employment that it really counts for the for the um, for the continent. Well, yes, yes, employment is the big part in in the tourism industry, and uh, this is why a lot of countries are working. You know, a lot of people are unemployed in Africa. Some some of the percentages by countries can can exceed 25 and 30 percent of unemployed people. So the different governments 
knows that in working on working on the tourism uh, industry, they can decrease the unemployment figures. As you can see, you know, Seychelles is the number one. You know, Seychelles is a small island in the uh, Indian Ocean next to Madagascar, for, for the one who doesn't know. And uh, except agriculture and tourism, they don't have other things. So the government is doing a lot of work to, uh, to, on, on tourism to attract, they, they, they stayed on the top end, very luxurious uh, tourism. And most of the people now we can see, you know, when we say 19% of the population is working, you know, uh, families in Africa, uh, there are big numbers. So in Africa, you know, there are families with six, eight, and even 10 people. So when one person is working on the tourism industry, he's directly feeding 10 other persons with him. And these figures are for the direct job. You know, when we say direct job, that means people working in the restaurants, in the hotels, uh, but there, there are also the indirect job. You know, the taxi driver who is working in Seychelles need tourists uh, to work. So Seychelles, Cap Verde, Mauritius, most of them are small islands. So where uh, tourism is really, really important, but when we see that countries like Egypt, Egypt, Egypt is almost 1 million person. So 6.4%, maybe the figure is not important, but when we apply it on the 1 million Egyptian, we can see that a lot of people are working, uh, are, are eating from this, uh, from this industry. Exactly. Well, I, I would say that for the case of Tunisia, it's a little less because we have like, let's multiply by two or three people for each person yes. working. But we know also that it's very important being in the country we know that it's really really important around 400,000 people or 500,000 people for the direct working, job yes for the direct jobs exact exactly so when we when we multiply this by three we have one 1 1.5 knowing that the whole tunisia encompasses around 12 million people so yes yes it counts it's, for, it's for a big 1.5 even a little bit more you know yeah. when we say uh, well, when crisis before happened in, happened in the past and the tourism was down you know, uh, it affected all the country, all the people and all the other industries because it yeah. goes like like a bulk, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's a snowball effect coming from the from, coming from uh, from uh, the fact that, as you stated earlier, direct coming from the indirect employment. Yes, uh, definitely. Yeah, generated by tourism. Yes. So after looking at these some figures and, and facts that we just announced about Africa, um, You'd uh, you would be welcome to talk about some constraints and challenges facing this uh, this tourism industry in the yes, continent. Yes, you know, er uh, early in the document we saw we saw about the figures we saw about the figures of Europe and uh, North America, and then we saw about the figures of Africa. Unfortunately, for all of us, you know, when we say Africa, uh, except the wildlife, we all sometimes think about those civil wars, the problems, uh, the dictatorships in some countries. And all these problems act actually have a bad uh, effect on, on tourism. And other constraints and challenges also these are there. This is why we have only 70 million or something uh, coming tourists. One of the major uh, challenges is air transportation. By that, uh, we are talking about the low air access in most of the city of, of the big cities. Uh, we can highlight the fact that most of the main air transport hubs for Africa are based outside the continent. Let me make myself clear. Uh, if I want to go from Tunisia to Lagos, which is the capital of, uh, of, of, of Tunis, the capital of Tunisia, and I go to Lagos in uh, Nigeria, uh, I will have for sure to go by Heathrow in London or Paris or Dubai or Istanbul. There are no direct flights taking people from a big African city to another, uh, especially from the North African part to the South or, or the Sub-Saharan part. Even though we need, we need to highlight the fact that one country uh, did a lot of job, a uh, lot of good work in the past years and it's Ethiopia and uh, with the airport of Addis Ababa, the capital, which became the first African hub. But it's still not enough, you know, uh, most of the people will go because when you go on uh, on kayak or a sky a sky scanner or any of those sites to get your your ticket or to, to compare the prices, you will see that 
to go from Casablanca to uh, to Ivory Coast or, or or any other big African countries, most of the proposals are to go through Dubai or to Paris or London. It's mainly mainly there now. The new baby is there, Addis Ababa. This country did a lot of job, but it's still there is a lot to be done in this in this section regarding the or the transportation. You know, earlier uh, this week when we were talking together. I was telling you about the airport of Bongi, Bongi, which is the capital city of uh, Central Africa. Uh, mm. And you know, this capital, it looks, uh, this airport, it looks more like a train station in one small European country. And uh, it's, it's really, really smart. It, there, there are only three international air carrier who goes there, which is uh, Air France, uh, Congo uh, Airways, and uh, the Ethiopian, uh, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. So you know, this is uh, the, the capital city of the Central African country, and uh, it's very very hard to any of tourist or even uh, any other person to reach this uh, this city because uh, those companies are deserving this city only once a week. So when you compare those figures to the major cities in Europe, where you can go to. Paris from any other city 20 times or 40 times a day, you know, so this is when we say that air transport yeah. is one yeah. of the main constraints. So yeah, and this, uh, just to, to, to follow up what you just stated, so to make it clear, so to go to Africa, we need to go out of the continent and come back to the continent again first. Can you imagine that in number yeah. of hours? You know, I would say yeah. the example that I, I, I gave, you know, I did myself Tunis to Kinshasa. Yeah. You know, Tunis to Kinshasa, normally it should be a six, maybe maximum seven hour flights. So when you go, when you do this through Paris or London or even Dubai, so Tunis, Paris, it's almost three hours. There is the transit, which would be three, four hours. And then Paris to Kinshasa, nine hours. So this, it multiplies by two or 2.5, the number of hours needed to go from a city to another. So if you are a tourist and you have a one week holiday and you need to take one day in the departure and one day to the arrival to reach your destination, you will think twice before going uh, to such a city. So, you know, so even Tunisian tourists, you know, the, 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 African, the, the African market should be important for all the African continents. But I don't think that a Tunisian tourist will choose uh, an African destination if you have to do 16 or 18 hours to reach a oh, yeah. uh, neighbor country, you know. So for accessibility reasons. And, yes, this and, is what we some, say and, about low, yeah. access, low air access. Exactly. And there are even countries where you need to hire your own small private plane to access them. So not even like open accessibility through other continents. Um, yes, but, but talking them... about this, we did uh, one question wouldn't be a good opportunity for some countries. I mean, the opportunity is being taken right now by Ethiopia, but don't you think that it would be also an opportunity for other countries to make hubs or to have this? Yes, some of them, some yeah. of them are working on that, but you know, uh, investment in air transport is, is very costly. You know, you need a lot, yeah. and a lot of money. It's not, it's not just a matter of million of dollars, but I would say billion of dollars. Of course, so, you yes. know, the, the, except Ethiopia, which, which succeeded in this, there is Morocco with the, capital, with the airport of Casablanca, who yeah. is working on that. They are not among the, the major hubs, but they are doing a good job, especially on the Western part of Africa. So, you know, to go to any of the Western capitals like Dakar or, um, or, yeah. or 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 uh, um, the, the other capitals, you know. Now you can go through Casablanca, which is decreased the number of hours fly a number of flight oh. hours. But this I think some of the major capitals of the central part or the yeah. southern part should work on this. There is nothing that is being done for the time being, mm -hmm. but maybe the, the the future will be brighter, and we will see maybe even Cape Town in South Africa or. Or well, yeah. who knows, the Kinshasa in uh, in Democratic Congo becoming uh, becoming a hub, or or even Nairobi in Kenya becoming uh, such a hub for the eastern part of Africa. Also, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But at least it opens doors for uh, for uh, 
It opens doors for future investments. Yes, yes, exactly. For yes, because except the, except it, except local. the airport, there yeah. is the national carrier. You know, Ethiopia. It's not only it's not only the the airport of Addis Ababa. It's it's also Ethiopian Airlines, yeah. which which is going doing those uh, the, those lines. You know. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, uh, now moving to the second challenge, which is tour operators. Yes. I would make, make so a, this... small, uh, a small note, if you if you allow me on that. Just we 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 have always dealt with this. Maybe in some other continents, this problem does not exist. But for for specific countries, I mean, especially for the North African countries, it's quite a big deal. So please, yeah, could you? This point brings us back to the last point. You know, the major European tour operators, in order to bring to bring the clients to bring the tourists to the African countries, they are using charter flights. You know, so to go to Tunisia or to Morocco, Egypt or any other countries, you will not have to take regular flights. But if you go to to do not name them, one of the major tour operator, they will offer you a whole package that includes the flights through a charter flight so these tour operator have uh, have big figures and they are bringing large amount of people to the african countries so they are they are they are the one in the in the comfortable position when they negotiate with the hotel chains with the local hotel chains they dictate their law by dictating their law i would say the pricing strategy even sometimes the offers, you know, uh, I worked in some hotels where the tour operator decides what you should give in the breakfast, you know, in order to meet the, the what the, 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 the tourists okay, are waiting okay. for. So, you know, if you're going to bring uh, tourists from Great Britain and you're going to bring them to, to Tunisia, they might uh, like the local breakfast once or try some items. But you cannot give them the local breakfast on daily basis with the local items and not giving the pudding or the porridge or some something that they are used to. So the tour operating when they negotiate the contracts with the with, with the local chains and the hotels in in Africa, you know they they are talking about big money and about large tourists that they bring. So they are the one who are dictating the law and especially they are pulling the price really really down in order to attract more and more clients in their countries by attracting the by pulling the price down this can affect badly the the offer that the hotel the local hotels are giving and it affects badly also the local population who are not getting benefits from all those tourists who are coming and visiting their countries what what we uh, aligned uh, to what you've just stated now through the research a few years ago we used to say that uh, the tour operators are just positioning themselves for those countries. So for them, they don't really care about country Tunisia, Morocco. They are using similar photos, similar, um, um, not only with North Africa, the, 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 the example that I'm talking about is North Africa and South, uh, South uh, Europe. So some countries, they are exactly the same. For them is A, B, C. That's what made, if you remember during the, the Arab Spring, some countries, uh, because, no way to go to go to Tunisia or Egypt. So some other countries, you know, the like Bulgaria, say, yes. You know, yes. Some we say European. we say oh, we say the crisis and in, in some countries they can make the happiness and others. And of we course. had all the tourists like transferred directly to other countries. Other yes, directions. Albania, Bulgaria, uh, to yeah. side only the, the, those two in Europe. You know, even Turkey took the major part of yeah. the European tourists who weren't able to come and visit the Euro the North Africa. North African. Uh, just to finish on the on the tour operators uh, yeah. side, you know, it's the two operator who invented all inclusive, you know, and this is for the well being of the tourists is to have everything included. So you know when you're gonna leave your your country and going for a one week or ten days holiday in another country, you know that the trip will cost you this amount of money. So it includes. It includes it's not only food and beverage because right? it includes the the transportation the transportation from the airport to the hotel some activities the food and beverage the spa etc etc so this is why yeah, which yeah. we are saying yeah. that it's a challenge to deal with tour operators who are yeah exactly i com i completely uh, agree with that and about investment investment access to finance uh probably you will mention international and national both Yes, for this yeah. for 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 this uh, for this constraint, investor access to finance is to be divided in two parts. 
So there is, there is the local investors and the international investors. For sure, and everybody knows that for an international investor, the most important things is how to get back his money and take it out of the country. Uh, most of the country are not working on that and the procedure and the bureaucracy is very, very difficult. Uh, for others like Tunisia or Morocco or even Egypt, those who have a long history with tourism, they are facilitating their laws and all the procedure in order to attract some international investors and international chain in order for those to invest in their companies. To get back to the local investors, you know, the bank, and especially if there is a financial crisis or, 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 or if the bureaucracy locally is, is, is very hard, it will be very difficult for some wealthy people to invest in this sector in this country. We all know that are some of our major hotels in Europe are owned by some African uh, oligarch, you know, some so some people in a, some rich African people. Instead of investing in their countries or in the neighbor countries, they prefer to put their money in Europe because it's more easy and it's more secured. So this is a major problem for investors: is the access to finance in the in the African countries. Yeah, and it's, it, it, that's why we have uh, we have many research also about foreign direct investment in the tourism sector and its challenges within the uh, within the continent and specific uh, specific countries. I will move forward towards the visa requirements. You know, um, visa visa it's a major it's a major problem. You know, if you are coming from America, France, Spain, or whatever occidental country, uh, and you will have to go to an embassy print some documents, put your passport and then, and then wait for one week and or two weeks in order just to take your family for one week holiday in some African country, uh, this, is, this is a problem. Unfortunately, most of the, Euro, of the African countries are asking for visas uh, from European or even from African citizens. You know, I, I work in Algeria in one of, not one, the major, uh, conference and convention center in Africa. Unfortunately, the law of Algeria is uh, they are dealing the same with other countries. So if France is asking for a visa from the Algerian citizen, they will ask visa for, from France. And this, and I can see it on our, our daily negotiations, it's a major problem because people will go, rather than going to Algeria who ask for a visa, they will go either to Tunisia or to Morocco to do their mice or to do their tourism. So I think that most of those African countries should, should think twice on their visa strategy. And uh, also, you know, when uh, I was saying earlier, when I, when I went, because I worked in Kinshasa, so, you know, I had to, to, to put my visa, to take my visa from the local uh, embassy, uh, Congo embassy here in Tunisia. And then there is a, another long procedure in the airport itself. So once you arrive, you give them that visa, so in order for them to give you the visa to access the city. It took me, I think, one hour or one hour 30 from an office to another to get this document to be able to go out from the airport. Same thing when I was going home. You need the document. It's another sort of visa to leave the country. So I don't think that a lot of people will be keen to visit such exactly. country with, with I, heavy and a lot of bureaucracy in, in order to, to get there and get you get your document. You know, yeah, just, I, I completely just before, agree with you. Before giving the word, yeah. uh, countries like uh, Seychelles, Tunisia, there are no visas. Some other countries, they are thinking money-wise, like Tanzania, the visa will cost you $50 and it will take you 10 minutes to get it in the, in, in the airport. So, so there is a booth, you go there, you give your passport, they give you a document, they take the $50, and you are welcome. So even though if some countries are thinking money-wise, there is some easy procedure for the people in order to attract them. So yes, you were saying, uh, Samiha? Yes, yeah, exactly. I was I was confirming this because in some countries, even when you take it at the airport, the other way around, you will need. Um, it's it's not it's not a visa that you have. It's just an invitation, and then the procedure is so difficult at the airport, which some people find themselves repatriated, but actually they have the visa or yes. for a translation of passport. No yes. translation, go back. So we know that that similar scenarios, but maybe on the step, but these, we will see it in the classification of countries. Yes. Um, 
If so, we can just in, in, in order to be to 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 be uh, to, to be on time, we're going to yes, go please. quickly regarding those uh, those uh, challenges. Uh, we are talking here about the international standards, uh, the accommodation. Uh, are they meeting the standards everywhere? In most of the country, you know, when you are coming from Europe, uh, hygiene is number one. So, will it be there or no? It's not the case for most of the country, even though you know there are some international uh, companies working on that, giving certification like Crystal, like other companies, you know, following up with the hotel and with the restaurant. So also in this part, it's really important to meet the international standards, and so you need to have this. The other yes, uh, uh, the sorry. other challenges is uh, the lake or the low level or tourism skill in most of the countries. So. Uh, I said earlier that when I worked in Kinshasa, uh, it was a hotel opening for an international chain, and it was very, very, very difficult for us to find trained people. Even if we did the the, the training on-site training, you know, with the, with the with the turnover, you find yourself putting all the energy and all the time in the training, and with the turnover, so this point is really important for the yeah. for the tourists. A bureaucracy to you investors we talked about it also yeah. we're not going to stay as i say it a lot everybody knows about the crisis terrorism some disease or crimes that can affect the tourism industry in the african countries so so i'm going to uh, to to go further to go further to to, to the tourism performance and uh, and i'll start i'll start with this classification that uh, that you have made in the presentation confirmed countries and then the second and the third. For confirmed countries, I can understand myself, uh, Morocco, Tunisia, Egypt, and even more countries than just the three stated here, which probably have um, have had, as you said earlier, from the 50s, their tourism and everything is quite developed. Um, but what, what about the two, the two others? Yes, we have the emerging tourism countries. These are countries who are investing a lot of money and putting real marketing strategy in order to attract tourism in their country. Here we say that Mozambique, Rwanda, and Kenya uh, in, in this part. For the other part is countries who have a high potential, uh, but they are either not doing much or what they are doing is not enough to attract international uh, tourism. In this third part, you know, maybe Mali, Gabon, and Ivory Coast are to put on the side and Ethiopia uh, even though uh, earlier we were talking about the Addis Ababa airport and the national carrier, who, who, who they are doing a good job on that, but still their strategy is new. We will talk. We will, we will talk further about uh, about Ethiopia, Mozambique, Rwanda, and Kenya. Yes. Um, okay. So just to to um, did I move on the screen? I'm sorry. I think I lost my screen. That's all right. Let, let, let us talk about the classification of. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. We'll back, uh, uh, I'll, I'll share it again right now. Yes, I'm no very sorry. No <laughs> words with that. Yeah. Okay. So we can back to the. Yeah. I can. Back, oh, okay. Yes. We are here. You can see. Yeah. Next one. So yeah, I, I was uh, I was uh, pointing at the, at this uh, this specific slide. Where you see they have, this is the continent, but just only few, few countries. Yes, this this slide is is, is very beautiful. The word "stop tourist destination" by money spent. You know, we can yeah. see a lot of country in the different continents, and in all the continents there are a lot of colors. But unfortunately, here in in, in Africa, it's only few of them, and we can. Yeah. We cannot even compare it to the rest of the world. You know, let's not talk about the USA with their two yeah. hundred and five and fourteen billions, or France or other major continents. But here, Tunisia with uh, almost nine million uh, tourism, only two billions. Morocco, number one in Africa, with only eight billions. So yeah. there is a lot can, to be done. We can see also in the in the in the second uh, in this slide also. With yes, this is the contribution to GDP of the of, yeah. of tourism uh, money. Unfortunately, there are a lot of white country in French. It's it's written donnée non disponible, meaning that we do not have the figure. Uh, we know that in some some countries the information is very difficult to get. Like here, we have Algeria, Mauritania, Mali, Central Africa. 
uh, well, unfortunately, yeah. we don't have those figures. Some other countries, it exceeds the 8%. Like if you can get back to the last one, uh, yeah. for example, Tunisia, Morocco, Namibia. Uh, so we are exceeding 8% of contribution of GDP. Some are between four and eight, many of them like Egypt, Ethiopia, Madagascar, Kenya, Tanzania. So um, yeah. also it's, there is a lot to be done here. Of course. So the main differences in the classified countries I'm going to go to through those slides uh, in quite a yes. way. Let's talk about it because each country has its own strategy, yeah. even though almost all of them are working in different ways to attract to attract to attract the maximum number of tourism of tourists, excuse me, and make them spend the maximum uh, money. So Morocco is the number one, uh, as we said, in Africa. Tourism is there first to create a new job and to contribute to economy. So um, ma 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 Morocco now is working on alternative uh, ways to attract tourism. For the last years, they decided they have you know, a nice shore on the Atlantic Ocean, so with nice waves. So they are doing good job in order to attract the young tourists who are yeah. looking for water sport. You know, Dakhla is a city uh, in the Moroccan uh, Mm -hmm. Atlant Atlantic uh, Ocean became mm -hmm. the mecca of the of the windsurf, kite surf, and surf. Of course, to attract to attract the, the 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 young tourism, you need to have restaurants, bars, clubs, not only hotels where they can stay and, yeah. uh, and the seaside uh, and the beaches. So so there is a big investment that is being done recently by Morocco in order not to have people coming from the for, for the Sahara and for uh, for the, their big cities. Yeah, I, I would like to point out also here for the case of Morocco during the last 20 years, we could see also the big difference of um, that, that, that has been um, clear in Marrakesh, which was also attracting luxury tourism. Yeah, Marrakesh, Marrakesh is the city for, for five star and even more hotels. Yeah. Their uh, local Riyadh, like in the picture, this is uh, the, the Moroccan house with the pool inside. So, so it yeah. attracts the wealthy European and American people. And uh, in order to have that, they did the nice work on Marrakesh. Yeah. So I will try to go faster about Tunisia and uh, Egypt that are coming. Just to talk yes. a little more about C2 and C3, if you So, so just to talk quickly about the strategy that's been done by, by Tunisia. Uh, Tunisia has been doing for the last year, especially after all the crisis, uh, a good job in order to diversi device, diversify, excuse me, uh, to tourists. Not only leisure, now they are doing a nice job on the medical and the beauty surgery. It attracts a lot of tourists, even from European country, so for no surgery or liposuction or uh, any French or Italian yeah. or lady will think now of Tunisia as a destination for, uh, for, for this. Also, there, there are the bivouac and the, and the safari and the discover of the Sahara, uh, yeah. the Tunisian desert with some nice high-end hotels, five-star hotels now opening over there. International chains, of course, like, uh, like Anantara recently, and also for the cultural part with Carthage and the major uh, Roman and uh, yeah. Punic uh, cities. So, uh, and what about Egypt? Egypt, the work that's been done by Egypt, Egypt mainly they will, they are keeping focusing on what they have, the history and the pharaohs and the pyramids. So their strategy is to, to, to focus, first of all, on this part, as we, we also saw recently on the news by the new opening of the, the big uh, Cairo Museum, or when they discovered the Saqqara um, mummies, or the, the, the medias and the marketing that they did around this. But also they did a, a good work on the administrative and legislative uh, references to attract investors. So they made it easier for investors to understand the law and uh, to get uh, return on investment if they invest their money in, uh, in, uh, in, in Egypt. They are working a little bit, not much, on the medical, on, on the mice. They are doing a nice job on the mice uh, part. And they're looking for new markets like Chinese, Japanese, and uh, 
all the, the Eastern uh, Asian uh, country. Also, for the last 10 years, they've been upgrading uh, the hospitality infrastructure, infrastructure uh, by renewing a lot of, of old hotels. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so if we go to, to, to the number two, you, we stated only Mozambique, Rwanda, and Kenya, but there are lots of countries. No, it's not only, it's not only those three. Uh, there is Angola that we can put there. There is, uh, you know, um, uh, just to get back to your, to, to your point, the World Travel Tourism Council classified Mozambique, Angola, and Uganda as the fastest growing African destination for leisure for the period between 2016 and it goes until 2026. You know, those, those three countries have been facing a major and a deadly civil wars for several and several years. So when we know that by the 90s in those three countries, they had civil wars, and now those three countries are the major and the fastest growing destination for leisure, we can see that they are doing a great job and they have a nice uh, marketing strategy, which is giving its price. You know, uh, Mozambique, for example, uh, it made all the needed material for investors available online to make it easier for them to invest their money. So all the reports, the law, the guidelines for any investor, it's easy for him. He goes on Google and he will have all the information needed to invest money on Mozambique. And this can attract a lot of international chains. You know, we saw we, we, we saw for, on, on the last 10 years in Mozambique, the opening of several hotels from international chain. They did Marriott, Movampic, Sheraton, Hyatt, Melia, all of these chains open hotels in, uh, in, in, in uh, uh, Mozambique. And this country focused on one thing is the ecotourism. So even though they have beaches, coral reefs, the big five games, biodiversity. So they said, we're going to do ecotourism, attract people, wealthy people with a lot of money. And now their strategy is paying. So this is regarding Mozambique. Regarding Rwanda, also, it's easier, you know, to attract mass population because the investment is, is less. So it's more difficult to attract high-end uh, to, to tourism. So also Rwanda, like Mozambique, this is what they choose, the, the strategy that they choose, you know. So high-end and ecotourism, you know, they have gorillas, they have rainforests, they have very, very beautiful, beautiful sites. And instead of saying we're going to attract millions, they said we're going to attract less, but people spending more money. You know, in 2008, uh, Rwanda attracted not even 1 million tourism who spent $200 million. In 2020, uh, it's almost there. It's almost 2 million tourism, so it's only the double, with four, three times they spent money with $600 million. Um, million, uh, million, uh, million dollars. So also Kenya is in a good, good trend uh, with the safaris, with the big five, uh, the big five uh, game and the wildlife, you know. So, uh, so this is regarding yeah. Mozambique, Kenya, and the, the second. That's why I moved. I moved, uh, I moved through the the slides because we yes, can yes. see the gorillas here, which is yeah. You just stay. Yes, this is in Rwanda. Yeah, it's a very beautiful site when you go into it. I mean, it gives you like really envy to go. And they want to preserve it. They are doing everything to preserve it, not attracting mass tourism. So it's it's their strategy. They, they said, you know, in, in, in Rwanda, their their aim is that the money spent by the tourists is is is, is there to be spent on the local uh, on the local pop population, you know, in order to have hospital to have uh, so uh, those projects can help local community. Uh, so this is uh, this is this is very nice, you know. Yeah. So I'll move on to the to the C3, and we can see here that what we have discussed earlier about Ethiopia, we can see the hub, yeah, of Ethiopia. Yes. So Ethiopia. you see, when you are coming from 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 major European destination, you can go through now Addis Ababa to go to uh, uh, Abuja, to Nairobi, to Mombasa, to Zanzibar, to Lumumbachi, or 
or or any of the major African uh, cities. You know, all this has been done in the in the last year. Uh, you know, you know also Ethiopia. Uh, as I said earlier, they are in their beginning, but they have uh, they have a big potential to to become one of the of the major and leading tourism destination in Africa. You know, you know that Ethiopia has the the highest number of UNESCO heritage sites in any African countries. Uh, you know, Ethiopia is the country where coffee was discovered uh, first by by the humanity. So they have also the blue uh, the blue Nile. Nile, they have national park. The potential is high. The potential is there. They are doing some nice work, but I, I think that we're going to be seeing the result in the in the in the coming years. Uh, and uh, also among their strategy is the Chinese is the Chinese market. You know, recently the Ethiopian embassy in Beijing, uh, among uh, along with the Ethiopian uh, airlines, launched. Um, the marketing strategy to attract uh, the Chinese tourism in order for them to discover this beautiful, uh, beautiful and big country. For the others like Mali, Gabon, Ivory Coast, the potential is big, but the work what, which is done, you know, for example, Gabon, you, you need a visa and the process is so difficult. Uh, so. Yeah, I have an idea about it because I've visited also some countries, but I'm really, really happy that uh, that we have this discussion about Africa. And I know that while discussing, even apart from uh, from being on uh, on uh, on today's session, um, you are very knowledgeable about these uh, these countries, and it's really amazing to have all these uh, these information um, and specific cases. And I'm sure that um, the participants and also, people who will view later the, the video will be very interested on, on, uh, on, uh, on so. having this information. Um, so thank you very much, Woody. I will, we will try to go to, to, uh, to the discussion. And, uh, and I will give you one of the questions. Which strategies will be discussing with New Normal on tourism development in Africa? So can you say it again? Yes, which strategies we'll be discussing with the new normal, you know, with this new situation of after the COVID? Well, you know, um, COVID, COVID is there. In terms and of development said, in Africa. Yes, as I yeah. said, you know, let's forget about 2020. Now people are focusing on the second semester of 2021. Uh, the strategy, first of all, you need to show people that security is there, security related to the disease. So first to implement all the international rules from the airport until the hotel, the, the, the site that you can visit. Earlier, I was talking to you, uh, with you about, uh, about uh, Tanzania and Zanzibar, you know, to make it easier for tourism to come. They said, you don't need nothing, just come, we'll take the temperature at the airport and then you can go and, and, and enjoy. And they didn't succeed with this strategy because most of the European people would said, listen, it's not secure. If anybody can go there, who is positive, who is, who is negative, we don't know, we won't be going there. So one of the major points to be, to be added in the strategy is the hygiene parts. Uh, also now the strategy, as we said, is easy to diversify and to know what you are working on. If you are looking for high end, you need to give them what they are used to it. So to have the international standards, international chains, and to 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 meet their their their, their, their needs. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. And I guess that uh, that some countries also right now because of during this new normal, uh, maybe some countries they and we saw this like awakening. Everyone is awake suddenly on new strategies on how to to save or how to 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 make profits through. All the all what we've seen through this presentation in terms of uh, natural resources, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So maybe yes. they are going to take advantage of that. Actually, actually, one of the major points that most of the countries should work on is to diversify, diversify, and to attract new segment, new markets, even the niche. You know, so yeah. not focus only on one on one sector. Maybe by by trying to attract, you know. Not only leisure, not only people looking for wildlife, but also working on the mice, uh, also working on the medical uh, to, 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 to tourism, 
So this can can help now to attract some new people. Um, I have uh, I have another question. How can Africa enable development strategy for poverty elimination while maintaining biodiversity and economic uh, balance? Well, we see, you know we know we said we we said for for the example of of Rwanda that yeah. most of the money now is invested to help local community get a better life. So when people are seeing that the, the money brought by, by, by the foreigners, I mean, by, by the tourists, is spent on their local community, they will keep putting the product up. So uh, if you, you have a site and next to it, you have villages where you can build a hospital uh, from the money, from the tourism, don't worry, everybody will be securing the site, securing the tourism, making sure that everything is clean and everything is there for the tourism. So the poverty can be fought by this and also by the employment that will be brought. You know, in, in the Central African countries, the people who are securing uh, the sites are local communities. So now they understand that instead of killing the animals, securing them and and uh, preventing from killing them, it will bring more tourists who will spend more money and they will get jobs. So, so this is the major, the, the major point. Yeah, and, and we, know, we know both of us probably also that, that this richness that we've seen earlier on, uh, on um, um, this fauna and flora and all the richness that Africa has, especially in different parts, not only not in North Africa, um, they are very unique. It means that we cannot find in everywhere in the world. So it's this uniqueness that they may use later, preventing and preserving, and they may be using this uniqueness in, in, in order to, to, uh, to develop tourism. And at yes, the same and this time- is, This yes, is the maybe. case for a lot of country, country. You know, wildlife, it's not yeah. only two or three African countries, I would say it's, 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 it's there for the major, most of them, you know, and even if it's not the same, you know, in Rwanda earlier, we, talk, we were talking about the gorillas yeah. who are endemic, you know, in, in Congo, uh, in Congo, Kinshasa, Democratic Congo, they have the bonobo monkeys who are endemic to the, the, the Congo, to Congo river, river region. So it's only there, it's not in any other part of the world and the wildlife and what we call commonly the big five that everybody is looking for. You know, it's in Zambia, Tanzania, Kenya, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, South Africa. So all these countries should pre preserve this wildlife yeah. in order to attract more and more tourists. More and more. And so good quality, less numbers, good quality, preserving nature and sustainability at the same time, which is- Yes, good. and people spending and, more money. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we have and, and local communities, Will be will be uh, will have the Take class benefits. Have the advantage benefits yes. exactly. Thank you. <laughs> um, another question: What are the major challenges for Africa going through the health and climate crisis? Sorry, I, I couldn't hear that, you. Yes, I'll, I'll reformulate it. Actually, uh, so what are the major challenges for Africa going through the health and climate crisis? Well, uh, it, it, it's the same as any other countries in the world, you know, as we said, the crisis is there, the disease yeah. is there. So, uh, so it's by implementing international law to make people feel secure when you visit. Uh, also, uh, in order to, to the, the, the African country need to invest money on their health care uh, infrastructure. You know, when you are coming from any European country, uh, you need to know if you have any any kind of disease, even a small fever or whatever, uh, you're going to find uh, doctors, you're going to find a clean and nice hospital where you, they can take you. Uh, so this is very important. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, so this is this is for the for the for the side of the, the health and, and in terms of climate, uh, climate crisis, um, the climate change. Etc. Is there any any specific country which is really like being suffering from 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 climate change? No, maybe the person who who, who said this will have on, on mind the the example of Maldives, which is not an African country, of course. And you know, yeah. with the water coming up with the with the, the climate crisis, this country is will be facing in the near future major problems, uh, especially uh, maybe some, some of the islands will, will disappear. You know, the climate, climate crisis 
is there worldwide and for the all uh, the countries. So first of all, all the countries by the by the by the seaside will be facing some problems with the money with with the water coming up. But now I think I think the countries should focus on the on the disease and on the health care uh, first of all. And the climate climate crisis will come will come next. You know there there are priorities for for the. Don't forget. Let's not forget that most of the countries are poor. Money need to be invested uh, wisely. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Woody. You're welcome. For all the answers, and uh, I think we do not have any more uh, more questions for now. So. Adrian. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, uh, Dr. Shamli. Thank you, Dr. Shubana. Any other questions that uh, may arise, please feel free to send them uh, to our emails or to the emails that uh, the panelists have already uh, showed during the presentation. Uh, we are running out of time, so we'll have to uh, just uh, cut it here. But uh, I would like to really thank you, both of you, because it has been a very interesting session. We have heard information and uh, very interesting details and figures from all Africa, from Tanzania, Rwanda, Tunisia. We have really traveled through the African continent, which uh, has been very interesting, very dynamic. And it was great and um, I think very motivating to hear solutions and proposals for how tourism in Africa can go through this crisis and this situation that we are going through worldwide, such as diversification of the tourism agenda and investment in local infrastructures. So thank you very, very much to both of you for making this session so comprehensive and interesting. And thank you every, everyone for your participation today. Uh, again, Dr. Shemley and Dr. Shubana, see you again very soon.